<laughs> Groomberg Slopes, hole two, part five. Awesome. I don't have this hole. This is one of the, uh, I need two, four, and six in order to complete a set. So, hole number two, first time I've ever been on this hole. Big par five. From looking at the, oh my gosh, this is a monster par five. So, Ryan's going to go to the left. I'm going to go to the right. That way we can get a good look at both sides. It's taking a 100% accurate club. He's going to end up in the rough. He's definitely going to end up in the rough. Excellent. Now at least we can see that. That'll work. That uh, way he can see if he can get on from there with a uh, wood. And we can get up into that area there. It's doubtful that we would be able to get over into that unless we brought a monster ball. Let's see what a snow globe looks like. We might be able to get over all the way up with a power five ball. Look at that. If we had good wind, we could definitely get way up in there. I'm not really willing to uh, burn a snow globe ball on that. So we'll see if we can pop it out into that area and catch it. <laughs> That'll work. At least we got some distances there. We know like, hey, it is possible to get up there with a power five ball and an extra mile nine. So if you've got an extra mile seven or eight, it may not be because of the top spin that's on there, but it's still worth exploring that. It would be much better with some tailwind to help you out. So that 15 top spin that the extra mile nine got, is monstrous. That is excellent to know that if you're down there at the bottom where Ryan was at, that you can still get up on the green from that area. So that's very good information. Let's see where I'm at in my club. Okay, so there's men. And I'm right at max. So I'm right at max long iron. This is going to be, I'm going to switch up my long irons. And I'm going to put a grizzly in my bag. Because almost all of the long iron shots that I've seen so far in this don't require big backspin. They, they are run up very accurate shots. And that's a little, about a half a ring. No, hit it great. Getting a little lag. Everybody's been complaining today when you get these new updates. I did um, clear my cache and that helped out. One of my teammates is having a super hard time getting lag and stuff. So I, and I was having some issues. So I cleared my cache in the game and that did seem to help a little bit. But I'm not sure if it's just because there's a lot of people on because there's all these new holes and everybody's trying to catch them. This looks like a fairly easy eagle, and we've got several opportunities to increase our odds of getting an albie. If we can blow through up there and get all the way up to the green fairway, that is a monster, monster shot. But that would that puts you in a wedge or minimum short iron. I'm not sure if it's possible to get down there, but if I catch this hole again and get any kind of tailwind, all right, let's talk about that hole a little bit. Um, so we got some good info here. Unfortunately, we didn't have, we had a, uh, if I remember correctly, we had a headwind going in this direction. Hey, hold on one second. I'm going to change my pen color so that it'll show up a little bit better. There we go. <clears throat> 
That way it'll show up better when I'm drawing on the screen because that orange was kind of blending in with the background. I think we had a wind that was going in this type of direction. So Ryan came out there with a rock looking at 100% accurate club. Um, red line was in this area right here, probably with the top spin and stuff looking at a landing area out here. Clipped the rough, ended up right here, but with a sniper and all of the top spin that a sniper has, definitely able to get up on the green. As a secondary club in my bag it, for this, so if we kind of draw our arc out here, so he was able to get from that spot and then we do an arc out here. Um, anything on this side of the arc, if you bring the right wood, uh, if you're on the fairway, you can get on with a wood that's got some topspin. So looking at Big Dog Sniper, which everybody's going to have one of those two in their bag. Everybody's going to end up with a Big Dog pretty quick in the game. So if you don't have a Sniper, Big Dog, lots of topspin. Lots of things you can do, but bad ball guide. So um, you'll have a little bit, but there is. it looked like there was a little bit of a backboard on this. So if you do overshoot it, it may go up and then come back down. With a power five ball, if we would have had some kind of tailwind, it did look like there was an opportunity to get over to this side. Now, here's the thing. Go back and watch the video earlier in the video and see where my bounces were out here. So it's going to be bounce critical. So if we're out in this area, we may not be able to use a lot of of. We can't hit it against a headwind because we can't take that wind out if we're doing overpower. But this landing zone out here, let's say we had a five mile an hour wind and we put all the overpower on it and we're in the perfect spot and we leave the wind in. The wind may not, we may have to take some wind out or we may have to take out three and always leave two in. So we'll have to, we'll have to keep an eye on the wind down here and we want to look for this, this second bounce because we could overshoot it and actually end up catching something here. So we, and I've noticed on this, in this Grunberg slopes that there's a lot of holes like this where first bounce is here, second bounce is here, and you can bridge the gap between the second and the third bounce, but you've got to get this second bounce in the perfect spot or you'll end up off trajectory over here or you'll end up clipping up here. So it's going to be, it's going to, it's one of those types of things where you've got to make it may not, all these shots may not be max overpower. We may have to, to take some of the power off. So that's a big variable. It's always better to either use no overpower, rub against the nubs, which doesn't make the needle go any faster, or max overpower. And so we may find ourselves in a situation, but there looked to me like there was an opportunity. And if we caught this, that's the third bounce then it's still going to move forward. So we could legitimately end up in this area. Now I was over here in this area in a long iron. This is short iron range over here. So that's an Albi with a short iron. So it's possible. So if we do our arc from where I was at, if you end up way up here in the front up here, you probably, that's probably going to be long iron too. And I have noticed another thing I've observed on these holes is that if you have a grizzly, and it's whatever long iron you have that has the best ball guide, that's the one that you want to bring. So if you've got an upper developed grizzly, you definitely want to bring that grizzly because it'll have 100% accuracy and then it's got great ball guide. I think I've got a level 7 grizzly and it's got 100% accuracy and it's got 4.1 ball guide. And so you're going to get a really good read on these holes because these are the type of holes that you're not trying to backspin in. You're trying to run it up to the hole. And it's very easy to make wind adjustments with 100% accurate clubs. And if we hit perfect and we don't get in the hole and we make an adjustment to that, it's very easy to make those adjustments because we've got a 100% accurate club. And if there's a backboard that we can use, and, and I want to clear up in my mind when people talk about funneling, if you're taking a shot here and you're running it up to the cup and you're going straight at it and trying to sink the shot, that's just a shot. What I think of as a funnel is sometimes there is a trough in the course and you're trying to catch that trough so that the, the terrain will funnel you towards the hole. But a lot of times what you're looking for is where you've got a backboard. You've got the pin. This is a dramatic backboard. Let's go backboard. you got a pin. And you're coming up here and then trying to bring it back to the hole. So you're watching that ball guide. 
because when you're doing those shots, it's, you know, when you're, when you're coming up the hill and then trying to roll back to the hole, if you can't see your ball guide all the way back to the hole, then you're taking a guess. You're trying to extrapolate where the ball is going to end up. But this way here, you're kind of trying to funnel it to the hole and you can watch that downward slope with the ball guide. So as long as you hit it perfect right here, you got a great shot of it coming back to the hole. But a lot of these holes that I'm seeing, you won't have to engage that backboard. But ball guide is really important because the better your ball guide on these shots where you're trying to run it up and just put it in the cup, um, that's big. Anytime I have a hole where I've got a slope like this and the pins in here, if I can run straight up to the cup and go right in, to me, that's the optimal shot. There are some holes where the shot coming to the cup, it's not a very good read and you can run up the hill. And then if you've got a club with great ball guide, you can bring it back down and the ball guide will lead you right back to the hole. There are some holes out there that that's a better way to go at it. But anytime I can go straight at the cup and try and just put it in the hole, um, I will usually try and take that option first, but we'll have to see. I'm going to bring out my, I've changed in every one of my bags. I've, I've put in a, a Grizzly so that I can start seeing what these holes look like because I definitely have noticed that we want to bring the best ball guy club that we have. So it looks like we might be able to get out here. We're going to have a long iron from here. Um, we could have a long iron from here. If I would have brought a big pow power five ball, I could have shot all the way up into this. And this might actually be, you know, the safer way to go at it because you've got such a wide open fairway. So I had a little bit of a window here. And if we had some kind of a tailwind or wind that would help us, that's only going to help my cause. And we do have a fairly fi wide fairway. So with a power five ball, we could get farther up this chute. And if we can get up here, we're once again, if we're in short iron over here, we're going to be in short iron over here. So um, both of these sides are viable. I'm going to continue to work this side right here and try a power four ball and see what happens with a power four. If I can catch this hole with a little bit of tailwind, I'm going to use the power four because if I can use a power four to get me into short iron range and I don't have to use a power five, then that's all the better. But you know, if, if I was out in this area and we could get all the way to the end by bringing out a power five ball and only have to take this shot for an Albie, and then I'm going to be burning some power five balls this week. <laughs> So those power five balls that came out, those present balls, they didn't have a lot of side spin on them. But what I've noticed in this tournament is, is that we don't need a lot of side spin on these big shots on these par fives. So those balls were made, they, those are going to be, those are going to be present balls for this. So if you've picked up some of them, that's good. If you haven't picked up some, they are worth looking at. All right. So that was a uh, hole two par five. Thanks for watching.